Hey friends, happy Sunday and welcome back to another week of what's for dinner. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I'm Taylor. I'm a stay at home wife and mom and I share these what's for dinner videos every Sunday to show you what we had for dinner throughout the week in hopes that it will motivate you to cook more for your family and give you some new meal ideas to try for your family. So I've got a week's worth of dinners coming up. If you like these kinds of videos, I hope you'll subscribe down below so you can come back see future videos, join our family here on YouTube. And as always, any recipes that I mention will be linked in the description box. Now let's go ahead and get into this week's what's for dinner. Friday night, I made some steak, some roasted potatoes, and some zucchini. So I started off with my potatoes because these were going to take the longest to cook. This is actually a new recipe that I'm trying. I've been seeing on TikTok a lot. Um, I don't know who the original person is because I've seen quite a few people do it on there. So you start off with half a stick of melted butter in a 9 by 13 pan, and then you add in about a third a cup of Parmesan cheese, and then whatever seasoning you like. I just did some Badia completely because it's a great all-purpose seasoning and then you just like mix all that together and it forms like a paste and you want to spread it evenly across the bottom of your whole pan and then I started cutting up some potatoes I did some little baby red potatoes and I cut them in half and then I scored them you don't want to cut all the way through you just want to score the edges and then you just lay them face down with that scored side into the parmesan cheese you want a single layer of potatoes to fill your pan Then the potatoes baked in the oven on 425 for 35 minutes. The steaks that I'm using today are these bacon wrapped fillets that I picked up at Aldi I think back in July on Markdown. I had them in my freezer and I was finally ready to use them. So I'm starting off with some olive oil in my pan and I'm going to let that heat up a little bit and add some butter to it. And then I'm going to add my steaks in and let them cook for about three minutes per side just to get a good sear on them. And then I'm actually going to toss them into the oven, like just take my cast iron pan and stick it straight in the oven. I've never really done this with steaks before, but usually I'm cooking like a thinner steak. So I looked up like instructions for cooking the fillets since they are thicker and it said to stick them in the oven. And I did season these on each side with just a little bit of salt and pepper. So here I am just flipping them over, making sure I get a nice sear. And then they're gonna go in the oven at 425 with my potatoes. And they go in there for a total of 10 minutes, but I flip them halfway through. And you're probably gonna wanna do it longer if you want them cooked like longer. I wanted it like a medium doneness, so we did 10 minutes total in the oven. Next, I thought I would show my zucchini since it's been a while since I've shown how I cook my zucchini and I do it pretty much the same every single time. So I'm in my smaller cast iron pan and I'm heating up a little bit of olive oil with a little bit of butter and then I've got my zucchini and I prefer to cut it into sticks. I find that it gets like less soggy when you cut it into sticks and then um, I've got some badia complete. Sometimes I also add some Tony's Creole seasoning but Elijah doesn't really like when I add the Tony's Creole seasoning so I was trying to get him to want to eat it. It didn't work but um, so I just used the badia complete this night and then I just like get it in a nice even layer let it get browned on the bottom and then I'll toss it around again and let it get browned on the other side and yeah that's all I do to my zucchini and it turns out delicious every time.
once the steak was done in the oven, I took it out and then I covered it with some aluminum foil and just let it rest for five minutes. So here are our plates. These potatoes were delicious. Everybody loved them. I will definitely make those again. And then the steak, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't my favorite. I don't think I would buy this bacon wrap filet again from Aldi. Just something about the smoky flavor it had from the bacon was not my favorite. I was not a fan, um, but we ate it. It was, it was okay. Um, just not my favorite. Saturday night I made a French bread pizza. So I had this loaf of French bread that I picked up on clearance at Walmart a little while back and just threw it in the freezer so I could make this one night as a quick and easy dinner. So I've got the whole loaf here and Andy wasn't home so I'm not making the whole thing at this time. Saved the other piece for later and then when he got home we made his pizza fresh because it's better fresh so I just cut this in half then so I've got two sides of the bread and then I'm turning it into like garlic bread first I'm gonna butter it up put some garlic powder on there and some parmesan cheese and then I stuck this in the oven on 425 for about six minutes When it came out of the oven I just put some marinara sauce on each side and then topped it with some parmesan cheese and then you could add whatever pizza toppings you like we just kept it simple and did some pepperonis and then this went back in the oven on 425 for 10 minutes. French bread or garlic bread pizza is always a hit in our house. We love it. You could even use those loaves that come like at the grocery store that already have like the butter on it for the garlic bread and like just bake it and then turn it into pizza. That's really delicious too. To go with it, we just had some salad for those of us that like salad and Lily of course just had some fresh veggies on the side. Sunday night we had a family favorite and that is shrimp and grits. We have loved this recipe ever since I made it like uh, I don't know like a year and a half ago it's a favorite I've shared it multiple times I will have the video where I made it linked down below Monday night I made some ham and cheddar crescent roll-ups I had some ham in my freezer left over from Easter that I've been really wanting to use up so I saw this recipe and I was like yep that's it that's what I'm making super simple and I know it'll be delicious so the original recipe makes like eight little roll-ups but I realized I had enough ham to make two um tubes of crescent dough so like 16 little roll ups so that is what I did I'm just taking my ham you could just use deli ham or even like Canadian bacon or something but I used my leftover sliced Easter ham it was a little bit hard to roll it up because some pieces were kind of thick but it all worked out and everything was fine so I just took that rolled it up with some cheddar and got them all lined up on my sheet pan
Then I took two tablespoons of melted butter and added some garlic powder to that and some parsley and then just mixed that together really well. And then I brushed that on the tops of these crescent rolls. And then these went in the oven on 375 and the original recipe said for eight to 10 minutes, but for mine, it took almost double that. It was like 18 minutes before I felt like they were cooked all the way through. These are really good, just a great quick and easy way to use up some leftover ham and different from what I usually do. Usually I end up doing like sliders, so crescent rolls are a little bit different. And then we just had some salad to go with it. Tuesday night we had spaghetti and meatballs. I like these Italian style beef meatballs from Sam's Club. They're our favorite ones that are frozen meatballs. We don't absolutely love frozen meatballs, but these are the best ones that we've tried. So I like to cook them up in the air fryer. They get nice and like crispy and it makes them 10 times better than just like cooking them uh, in a sauce or something. So I put them on my air fryer sheet. I spritz them with a little bit of olive oil and then they go in the air fryer on about 375 for about 12 to 15 minutes. And then while those were cooking up, I got my marinara sauce heated up. And then I also brought some salted water to a boil to cook up some spaghetti noodles. Once my meatballs were done, I just tossed them in my marinara sauce and let them simmer in there for about 10 minutes while my noodles finished cooking and while I made some garlic bread. So I'm making garlic bread with some leftover hot dog buns. These were in my cabinet and I wanted to use them up. And so I just took them and spread some Chef Chamois garlic butter on the inside of them and then put them in the toaster, let them get nice and toasted. And then we just had some simple cheap garlic bread to go with our spaghetti and meatballs. And here is everything plated up. Now homemade meatballs are definitely better than the frozen ones, but this is a great quick and easy dinner. Wednesday night, I made some air fryer chicken thighs. I absolutely love to do bone in skin on chicken in the air fryer. The skin, it gets so crispy and delicious. So here I've got some bone in skin on chicken thighs and I've drizzled up with some olive oil and then I'm going in with a bunch of different seasonings. I did some lemon pepper, some Tony's Creole seasoning, some body of complete, some onion salt, some garlic powder, paprika, pepper, and salt. And then I just got in there with my hands and rubbed this around really good to make sure everything was coated really well with all of those seasonings. And then I put them on my air fryer basket and they go in the air fryer on 400 degrees for about 35 minutes. You just wanna check the temperature and make sure that they're cooked all the way through. And I usually flip them halfway through and then flip them again like five minutes before they are done so that most of that skin is on the top again at the very end. And it just gets so crispy and so good. It's one of my favorite things to cook in the air fryer. I really like doing a whole chicken in there too, but this is just easier. You don't have to deal with the whole chicken um, and then to go with this we just did a box of rice and some green beans and it was a super good dinner thursday night i did some chicken and gravy in the crock pot so i'm starting off by making like the gravy mixture i'm doing one can of cream of chicken and then one can of water and then a chicken gravy packet and then i did a lot of black pepper some paprika some garlic powder some onion salt parsley and a little bit of chicken bouillon powder and then i just whisk that all together really well and then i put in my chicken breast i sliced these in half horizontally so that they were thinner 
and I just got those in there so that they were nice and coated with that gravy and then I let this cook on low for six hours you could cook it longer if you want to I cooked it for just the six hours because then my chicken was cooked through but it was still able to stay in like whole pieces um, if you wanted to like shred it up I would cook it for at least another hour and then it'll shred a lot easier um, but this is fully cooked and I just served that over some rice with the gravy and I did cut it up for the kids so that it was easier for them to eat and they didn't have to cut it up themselves. And then we had some salad on the side and some fresh veggies for Lily. And that is going to do it for this week's What's for Dinner. I hope that y'all enjoyed it. I hope that you got some new meal ideas to try. If you plan on trying any of these recipes, let me know which ones in the comments down below. And if you made it here to the end, make sure you let me know that you made it all the way to the end by leaving me a heart emoji in the comments down below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you'll have a good week and I will see y'all on the next one. Bye!